Hello friends, welcome back to your UPSC. Today in climatology we will be completing applied climatology, urban climate and climate change. So let's get started. So first we will be completing applied climatology and urban climate. Then we will head on to climate change. So let's get started. Applied climatology. What exactly is applied climatology? See. Whatever we have studied in climatology is a theoretical part, but applying it in practical or its application in practice is what comes in applied climatology. Okay, so we can simply say that it is the application of laws and principles of climatology for the solution of the problems of environment and society. Okay, so climate actually has both direct and indirect impact on various things. So we will look into its impact. First one is agriculture. So how climate affects agriculture? See, agriculture as we know every crop has requires certain amount of temperature, certain amount of te rainfall, humidity, and sunlight. Okay, so these factors are what are governed by climate. So this is how agriculture is dependent on climate. Okay, and climatology it actually will decide by climatology we will decide which crop to be grown in which area and at what season for example we can't grow the trees growing in rainforest area okay like uh, rosewood mahogany etc in the tundra region okay so all these areas have different climatic condition and according to these climatic conditions vegetation is done okay so this come in applied climatology next is precipitation now precipitation actually We can see that heavy rainfall at the time of flowering and pollination during agriculture may decrease the yield. Why? Because pollination will not occur as the seed or the pollens will run away or will flow away with water. Okay. So this is how precipitation will affect agriculture. Then we can see water logging during harvesting that is also not good for certain type of crops. Okay, so this is how precipitation and agriculture are affected by climate. Then we have animal husbandry. Now animal husbandry, we say the milching animals. Okay, so we have dairy cows. Dairy cows actually give milk or maximum amount of milk at the temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. So now the areas which are having good amount of annual temperature as 10 degrees Celsius, they will use or they will have dairy business. Okay. Another thing is like we have some areas like himalayas in himalayas the animal husbandry or uh, the cow or buffaloes they will be kept at the height of 
1500 meters only why because during snow the milching animals they reduce their or they give less amount of milk okay so this is how animal husbandry is affected by climatology next we have forestry so in forestry we see that sufficient amount of light should reach the land okay so the trees are planted in such a way that the sunlight will reach the ground and hence the soil will be more fertile okay then we have manufacturing manufacturing is greatly affected by climate how see in cotton textile industry we require 21 degree celsius of temperature and relative humidity about 60% okay why because the strands of cotton they convert into thread so the strength they get from humidity okay the strength of this cotton strand will be more in more humidity okay so this is how cotton textile is affected then we have next example of paper industry paper industry actually requires 20 degree celsius of temperature and 50% of relative humidity then we have cosmetic industries cosmetic industries they require 15 degree celsius of temperature with relative humidity of about 50% okay so this is how manufacturing is also affected by climate so the manufacturing of certain things or certain goods like cotton will be done in humid areas okay and other things which require dry climate will be done in arid areas so likewise manufacturing and applied climatology are related next we have transportation system in transportation system we will look into the areas which are covered with frost okay sorry the areas which are covered with fog so the transportation will be according to that then we have air routes so air routes the planes they are see we have planes these planes they don't fly in very harsh weather condition so first we will look into the climate so that plane can take off and reach to its destination okay so transportation system is also affected by climate and by the help of applied climatology we can help we can look into the best way for transportation and also we can help in transportation of various goods and services from one place to another next we have house clothing food and health this we all know that housing clothing food and health these are all the habits or all the nature of a person and his habits and culture they are directly affected by climate how see housing pattern if we see they will be different in coastal region than in desert region and they will be different in hilly regions clothing will also differ according to the weather condition prevailing in the area food also is actually based on the availability of the material present in the in that area okay so the material or food available in the area will only be used by the people living there next we have health conditions health conditions are also determined by the climate okay lastly we have urban planning urban planning see the climatic conditions and urban planning are very interrelated as
we can al always observe that the temperature of urban areas is more than the rural areas why because heat is trapped in urban areas because we have concrete concrete roads and we have buildings so they actually trap sunlight because of which the cities are more having more temperature than the rural areas next we can see because the areas are very closed in urban areas the a houses are very closed okay they are like this you can see the skyline like this in the urban areas so because they are very closed and compact we have less amount of humidity less amount of rainfall in these areas okay as compared to the rural areas or otherwise we will have very high amount of precipitation which will occur suddenly okay so there is very much temperature variation in these city areas or urban areas now we will look into next topic that is urban climate urban climate is the climate in urban areas which is altered from normal climate due to man main man made features like houses vehicles skyscrapers etc so actually we have normal climatic conditions but these normal normal climatic conditions are altered because of various man made features like vehicles they emit smoke so this smoke traps more amount of heat thus rising the temperature then we have different housing style we have more of vertical vertical buildings than the horizontal settlement okay so this vertical settlement actually it stops the sunlight to reach to the ground okay next we have various skyscrapers and all that so the all these things which are prevailing in urban areas they affect the climate very drastically now we will look into characteristics of urban environment so first characteristic of urban environment is concrete asphalt and glasses they are replacing natural vegetation so by cutting the forest so the forest area is cut down and various skyscrapers are made these skyscrapers for their construction they use concrete asphalt and glasses okay so these things are replacing our natural vegetation next we have next we have vertical buildings that are replacing horizontal structures see in urban areas we have more of population and less of area to settle them down so instead of having horizontal settlement we are having vertical settlement so in less area more of the population can accommodate okay so this is how in urban areas vertical buildings are replacing horizontal structures next we have large amount of energy are imported and combusted in urban areas we have more amount of vehicles more industries so for running them we use more of the fossil fuels like petrol electricity so fossil fuels like petrol they are imported from other countries and they are in quite large amount and they are combusted so as compared to rural areas 
we have more of combustion of fossil fuels in urban areas next we have combustion of fossil fuels creating high temperature and pollution like we studied in previous point there are more there are more vehicles and industries because of which we are combusting or we are using or burning more fossil fuels and by burning more fossil fuels we are adding more temperature to the environment okay and hence also adding the pollution now as we have done the characteristics of urban environment now we will look into basic characteristics of urban climate now in urban cities first we will have low rate of albedo we have low rate of albedo so why we have low rate of albedo albedo we know the sunlight which is reflected back from the earth surface okay directly is known as albedo now why we have low rate of albedo in urban cities or urban areas see we have skyscrapers and these are basically or mainly made up of glasses from outside so these buildings are made up of glasses now what will happen as the sunlight will reach instead of getting reflected back to the atmosphere they will actually be reflected to the other side then again to the other side because of glasses now because of this phenomenon the sunlight will be trapped inside the buildings and hence the albedo or the rate of albedo will be less as compared to rural areas okay bilkul hi now as the sunlight is trapped inside the building we will have less amount or low rate of albedo in urban areas next we have high temperature next we will have high temperature so because the sunlight or the solar radiations are being trapped inside these areas so we will have high temperature in urban areas as compared to rural because there in urban cities we will have less amount of vegetation and more of concrete so these they are these glasses and all these concrete they will actually absorb good amount of sunlight hence rising the temperature of the area then we will have low rate of radiation now because we have taller buildings the radiation as it will be trapped in the buildings we will have less amount of radiation then in urban cities we will have more absorption of energy why we will have more absorption of energy see the smoke that is released will contain huge amount of carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide etc so these are heat absorbing gases so they will trap the heat inside them thus rising the temperature and hence the energy will be more the energy absorbed will be more in urban areas then we will have no temperature inversion so because of high rising buildings and due to trapping up of solar energy we will experience very less or no temperature inversion in urban areas then we will having we will be having frequent smokes 
why because during the period of fog as we have quite a huge amount of pollution in urban areas they will get mixed with smoke and thus forming smoke in urban cities then we will have heated islands so heated islands are actually because we have concrete roads and high rising buildings in urban areas they all will trap sunlight thus rising the temperature of the area to a quite great extent and these are known as heated islands okay the best example of this is c b d then we have decrease in wind speed why will there be decrease in wind speed because we have quite high rising buildings in urban areas so the winds will be obstructed by these concrete structures and there will be less amount of wind that will be propagating further as compared to rural areas and because of this we will have intense precipitation why because as the wind will strike these areas if it is containing humidity it will form clouds and precipitate and this precipitation will be intense because we have no or very less amount of soil so the absorption capacity of the soil will be less and also the absorption capacity of the soil will be less because we have very low vegetation in urban areas so there will be no interception process going on hence the water will not percolate okay so during interception what will happen the speed of water will slow down because of hindrance okay and soil will absorb more amount of water by capillary reaction or by percolation so this process will be less or where in very low amount in urban areas then we have decrease in humidity in inner, inner cities why will there be decrease in humidity in inner cities because the moisture laden winds will not be able to reach the inner areas of the cities as we are having high rise buildings in outer areas as well as inner areas okay so the winds will either be very less in amount or will not at all be present hence the moisture or humidity of the inner cities will decrease and because sunlight is trapped and the water vapors water vapors require sunlight to be formed okay so the surface area will not get enough amount of heat to evaporate to for the water to convert into water vapors so the rate of evaporation will be less and because the soil will have lesser moisture so as compared to the rural areas there will be 15 50% less evaporation in the urban areas and because of smoke and smoke there will be low visibility in urban areas as we can take example of delhi now we have completed the concept of applied geo, uh, applied climatology and urban climate now we will move on to climate change climate change actually directly refers to global warming why global warming because various anthropogenic actions have caused to result or have caused great amount of emission of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases and because of this 
the greenhouse gases are trapping more amount of heat energy thus leading to rise in temperature of the earth by 1 degree fahrenheit from the last century okay now what are various anthropogenic causes of global warming first is emission of greenhouse gases so how much this greenhouse gases contribute in global warming so if we talk about carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is released from burning of fossil fuel deforestation agriculture industrial industrial emission etc etc so it contributes about 50% of total global warming or total greenhouse gases then we have methane this we can find from rice paddies bogs termites deforest and landfills kettles etc so in these areas or from there we can emit or we can get methane methane contributes 20% in total greenhouse greenhouse gases then we have chlorofluorocarbon chlorofluorocarbon can comes from prion styrofoam propellants etc and it contributes 15% in total greenhouse gases then we have nitrogen oxide nitrous oxide sorry it is emitted from fertilizers livestock waste fuel combustion etc and it contributes 5% lastly we have ozone ozone is found in tropospheric layer and it is a secondary air pollutant and due to photochemical reaction it causes global warming and its contribution is 8% then we have other human activities or we have human activities that contribute in global warming and what are their percentage first we have burning of fossil fuels so burning of fossil fuels in all forms like by running vehicles industries or just burning of coal etc they actually contribute 49% in global warming next we have industrial processes that contribute 24% i'm so sorry it's not 2% it's 24% of total global warming then we have deforestation deforestation will contribute 14% lastly we have agriculture which is contributing 30 13% in global warming now it is modern agriculture math, uh, modern agricultural method which use which takes the help of modern tools machines fertilizer insecticide pesticides etc so they contribute 13% now what are the effect of global warming global warming affect us in various ways first is raise in sea level then we have floods in coastal cities then we have salt intrusion change in precipitation pattern then we will have change in temperature increasing hurricanes typhoons and lastly we will have great contrast in uh, climatic conditions as some areas will be very dry and other will be very wet as some area will get uh, drought conditions and other will have flood conditions now how global warming affect living organisms now because of global warming we have increasing amount of bacterial decay next we have increasing diseases like malaria diarrhea etc then we have various pests pest species pest species that are invading in the areas then we have polar coral bleaching and coral bleaching is actually due to increase in stress or disease in corals we have death of fishes due to increase in water temperature and 
loss of oxygen and some areas in like in canada russia we have increasing agricultural areas and production and productivity while in tropical areas the areas are declining so because the snow is melting so there is more area in russia and canada for used for agricultural purposes but in tropical areas because the sea level is rising the area are con they are contra contracting so we have less area for agriculture then due to fast climate change we have various uh, animals that are disturbed and their species are also disturbed so because of this fast climate change we are losing various species of animal then we have effect on agriculture so as we said in russia the agricultural land is rising while in a tropical region the agricultural area is contracting then we have areas like various areas which are producing more which earlier used to produce less and because they are producing more the trade pattern of grain or cereals are changing the cropping and livestock combination is also changing in developing countries now we have effect on agro based industries and trade and also our uh, because of change in climate temperature due to global warming food clothing shelter and way of living of people in different area are also changing now how to deal with global warming we have three steps to deal with global warming first is prevention second is mitigation and lastly we have adaptation so prevention of global warming there are various uh, meetings that are held worldwide for example Kyoto Protocol, which was held in nineteen seventy seven, which had which actually gave a legal binding timetable to cut off the emission of greenhouse gases. Nextly, we have alternatives. We have to find alternatives of hydrocarbons and use them, and then we can plant more and more trees, which can trap carbon dioxide, so that global warming can be reduced fastly now how can we mitigate from global warming first is by planting forest or by increasing forest planting then pay tropical countries for keeping forest now tropical countries because they also want to develop they will cut their forest so we the developing countries or the developed countries sorry the developed countries have to pay them so that they can or they do not cut the forest for their development purpose lastly we have increase in energy efficiency so if we increase uh, increase the energy efficiency then less amount of fuel can do more amount of work thus we will emit less pollutants in atmosphere and thus global warming will be reduced now how can we adapt from global warming adapt adaptation methods are first is dike and levees dike and levees in coastal areas now because the sea level is rising we can make man made boundaries high rising walls so that the water cannot come inside the settlement area then we can plant drought resistant plant and trees so that the soil may not be eroded in the desert areas okay so this is how we can prevent mitigate and adapt with global warming with this we complete our climate change so that was all for today guys i hope you enjoyed today's lecture let's meet in our next class till then take care and have a nice day